This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Thank you for joining us for the news at 7. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. We're watching out for rain and wind now on this Storm Team 6 alert day. Taking a live look outside right there at the JW Marriott. And we've got a storm system moving through the metro area. Let's get right over to Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory with your forecast. And Mark, the rain has arrived. The wind, the strongest wind, not yet. 51, and I just heard a rumble of thunder here downtown. A wind out of the south at 10 miles per hour. There's the lightning between Indy and Lawrence on the east side, Cumberland, that'll move into portions of Hancock County, oh, say from Fortville, and on down toward New Pal and Greenfield. That's the metro area. There's a lot more rain to the south and west. Bedford right now with rain to Bloomington to Terre Haute, and then there's more back behind that. All of this moving to the north and to the east. It's raining now. It's going to rain for a while. We'll get these probabilities into the early morning hours tomorrow. Nine o'clock, another wave of rain. Some of this heavy at times. It really expands in coverage and intensity at 11 o'clock. As we go through the overnight isolated thunderstorms, it will be dry in the morning tomorrow. Tonight, the family of a missing Avon woman is facing the reality of a holiday without their loved one. Naja Farrell disappeared eight months ago. Tonight, her mother is making an emotional plea to hopefully find answers. We're going to keep this alive as much as possible and as long as we have to, to get what we need to get to, to get to some finality. Farrell, a mother of two young children, was last heard from on March 15th. She left for work but never made it there. Her car was found later that month. Then a fisherman found a body part belonging to her in a northwest Indiana pond. Some days it's surreal, you know, because, you know, you hear about things happening to people, you know, across the country and different other cities and stuff. And uh, when it hits home, then um, it just feels so unsurreal that someone in your family that you love that much that something horrific like that happens. Avon police have filed search warrants, conducted interviews, and collected surveillance video, but the case remains unsolved. They're asking anyone with information about what happened to Naja Farrell to please come forward. RTV6 is getting answers about a noisy issue in Boone County. People living in Zionsville's Royal Run neighborhood are used to being close to I-65, but they say new businesses and new homes have led to more traffic and more noise from the highway. Residents have asked the Department of Transportation for a noise barrier with no luck. So we checked in with INDOT. What would it take to get a sound barrier wall installed? So we have a noise test, I guess you could call it. Um, and we do that as standard through any construction project that's going on the interstate um, near a neighborhood or near businesses. The department conducted a traffic noise analysis in the area almost two years ago, but at that time it did not qualify for noise barriers. Other factors in DOT considers include the number of households affected, the severity of the noise, and how those impacted feel about the issue. If you think you're getting excess noise from the interstate, you can go to indot for youcom and submit a request. And if you have a problem, connect with RTV6. You can give us a call or send us a message at workingforyou at rtv6.com. Southport High School administrators say the school did nothing wrong after facing penalties for recruitment violations. The Indiana High School Athletic Association has suspended Southport's head basketball coach and removed the team from this year's state tournament. RTV6's Troy Washington is working for you to find out why the school is choosing to fight that punishment. Southport High says they saw a student in crisis and couldn't just stand by without doing anything, but they don't believe that the student should have to pay for that decision. There's an appeal in process, but as of right now, coach Eric Brand won't coach two games, and the varsity team won't play in the state tournament hosted at Southport High's gym. I still don't understand why we're being punished, especially the rest of my young men who didn't know about this. IHSAA got a tip from someone about Coach Brand raising money and signing a check to help a student from Congo who happens to play basketball. I honestly did not know that what I was doing was wrong. Um, I was transparent with my superiors the whole time. He says he took the steps thinking raising the nearly $6,000 would give the student stability for at least a year since he didn't have the proper visa. I just wanted to give him a stable environment and because I saw a young man who was going downhill emotionally. A downward spiral brought on because, according to the school, someone posing as a coach, not even connected to the school, made promises to the student, but never followed through. He's a 15-year-old young man who's been in another country for three and a half months, who the 
first man that he came in contact with didn't treat him right. Um, I hug him a lot. Coach Brand says he knew the student wouldn't be able to play on varsity because that's against school rules. There was no benefit for Coach Brand or his staff for that matter. We're here to serve students. Um, we have a student athlete that was in need. The school says that's the bottom line. They hope IHSAA sees fit to let the other students play in the tournament. Working for you, Troy Washington, RTV6. Taking a look at what's next for Southport High and its basketball team, a closed-door hearing is set for next Wednesday, December 4th. Southport will make its case. The committee will then have 7 to 10 working days to release a decision. If Southport doesn't like the outcome, it can take the sanctioning body to court. Indiana State Police has launched an investigation into a Fisher's police officer for possible misconduct. Officer Robert Bowling has been placed on administrative leave. The allegation involves ghost employment. That's typically where a government employee works outside the agency during their government work hours. The Fisher's Police Department says it will assist state police in their investigation and will also do their own internal investigation. RTV6 reached out to Bowling and we are still waiting on a response. Every year, people, community groups, and businesses across central Indiana state Step up to help those in need during the holidays. Tonight at Riverside Park on the west side of Indianapolis, nearly 1,000 families picked up everything they need for a Thanksgiving meal. This annual giveaway is put together by Ascension St. Vincent, Gleaners Food Bank, and the Estes Family Foundation. Bill Estes, best known for his local car dealerships, says the event is special for his family. I've been very fortunate uh, uh, in the automobile business to uh, be reasonably successful, and it's it's uh, been a great lesson for my kids for the last 15 years to uh, to give back to this community that helped us be successful all of those years, and uh, it's a very, very special time for us. This giveaway started 16 years ago. Before today, organizers distributed special vouchers for families to redeem at the event. Today, President Trump chose butter, one of two turkeys up for pardon in the annual White House Thanksgiving tradition. President Trump said the turkey appeared strong and that's what helped him make his choice. But don't worry about butter's competition, the other turkey named Bread. Both turkeys were retired to the Gobbler's Rest Farm in Blacksburg, Virginia. The White House turkey ceremony goes back to 1947 when President Harry Truman pardoned the first holiday bird. Also happening in Washington today, more legal battles in the impeachment inquiry. The Department of Justice is appealing a judge's order that says former White House lawyer Don McGahn has, a, has to comply with a subpoena to testify in the impeachment hearings. It was season as De La Quintera explains why Democrats are calling the decision a win. The White House insists it wasn't surprised by a federal judge's ruling ordering former White House counsel Don McGahn to comply with his subpoena and appear before Congress as part of its impeachment inquiry. I was with the president when he was briefed on the decision coming down, actually, and we, nobody was surprised. It is not unexpected, but it may be unsustainable. The judge not mincing words, stating the primary takeaway from the past 250 years of recorded American history is that presidents are not kings. This morning, McGahn filed to appeal the ruling and moved for a stay on his required compliance pending that appeal, setting the stage for a legal showdown that could go all the way to the Supreme Court. The DOJ has made clear that they will appeal yesterday's decision. It is not a final decision. The big question, whether such a case could set a precedent for other members of Trump's inner circle to appear before the House impeachment proceedings. The White House has blocked numerous people like former National Security Advisor John Bolton and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo from cooperating with the inquiry, citing executive privilege. After reviewing the McGahn case, Bolton's lawyer says the ruling doesn't apply to his client, while Pompeo wouldn't say if he plans to testify. When the time is right, all good things happen. <laughs> We've continued to comply with all the legal requirements. And the House Judiciary Committee has now scheduled its first impeachment hearing for Wednesday, December 4th, with a panel of legal experts to evaluate the evidence and the constitutional framework. According to committee rules, the president will be allowed to attend the hearings and his counsel will be allowed to question witnesses. In Ezra Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Still ahead on RTV6 News at 7, stay on your toes this Black Friday to protect your wallet. We're taking a look at how stores are set up to make sure you spend money. But first, the weather we are seeing today could cause major travel problems in other parts of the state. A look at dangerous weather conditions from coast to coast when the news at 7 continues after this break. Case of Homes, every Sunday morning at 1130. 
Central Indiana is under a weather alert with storms expected tonight, and we're not the only ones dealing with rough weather as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday. Not by a long shot. Millions of people in other parts of the country are being threatened by snow, wind, and wildfires. Camilla Bernal gives you a look at the dangerous weather expected from coast to coast. For millions of Americans planning to travel this Thanksgiving, this is not the forecast they want to see. Eastern half of the country, all wet. Western half, all white. And we're going to have slow travel tomorrow. More than 20 million people are under winter weather advisories, watches, or warnings. Hundreds of flights are canceled at Denver International Airport. It sounded like it was going to be a pretty major storm, so... That's why we thought we'd better get here early. Up to 15 inches of snow could fall there by the end of the day. Drivers in the region feeling the impact. Parts of a major interstate from Colorado to the Nebraska border closed down. And in the northeast, ferocious winds and rain are expected. Some airlines are waiving change fees ahead of the anticipated delays. Meanwhile, the west coast is bracing for severe storms that could spark flash floods. Check their tires, they have winter washer fluid, plenty of gas, dress warm, um, and just plan for delays. This as crews in Southern California are battling a new growing wildfire north of Santa Barbara. The fire erupted Monday. Fueled by strong winds, it has burned thousands of acres and sparked evacuations. K fire is burning under some of the toughest firefighting conditions uh, anywhere in the world. We're at the end of, of the dry season, so the fuels are some of the driest um, that we have. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Well, if you're hosting Thanksgiving this year, there's a good chance your family is in cleaning mode. If that's the case, there's one thing you might want to avoid cleaning before it's time to cook the turkey. Appliance repair experts say this is not a good time to use the self-cleaning cycle on your oven. There's a rare chance it could damage fuses or electrical controls. Though most ovens are probably okay, you could be facing an oven breakdown before holiday cooking. For now, you're better off removing any stains or food residue with a little elbow grease. Coming up here on our TV six. Hoosier students are diving into the science behind taste in Purdue's Spit Lab. What they're learning about the way we experience our favorite holiday foods. Yep. And lots of rain on the menu here for the next 12 hours or so with wind mixing in 50 mile per hour gusts. Rain stretches back to St. Louis now. It has arrived in central Indiana. Talk about the forecast through the weekend coming up. Get moving and get to Bell Tire. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Researchers at Purdue University are trying to understand why you might love green bean casserole while your significant other hates it. Or why you might be grossed out by sweet potatoes while the rest of your family loves them. In so-called spit labs, students and professors are digging into the mystery behind the way we perceive different tastes. Based on the results they're seeing so far, the answer is pretty complex. What you eat can actually change your saliva. And those changes in your saliva could then in turn influence the flavor of what you're eating, which means it's a circle. It comes back. So what you ate changed the flavor of what you ate, and that's going to change your spit in ways that changes the flavor of what you ate, and that might change what you decide to eat. And so it gets to be a complex relationship. Each student in the lab gets to do their own experiment to answer questions about how we experience food. The Spit Lab is looking for more people to participate in their studies. We've got info about how you can get involved on the RTV6 News app. Interesting there. The busiest shopping days of the year are right around the corner here. And there's a way to score deals without clipping coupons or being first in line on Black Friday. Annie Taylor explains saving money begins the second you walk through the doors of the store. Whether you're aware of it or not, a store is laid out in a very specific way to get you to spend more. Those huge shopping carts are always conveniently placed right as you walk in, but those small baskets, they seem harder to find. Well, the stores hope that you'll fill up that shopping cart with more items than if you had a small basket. Gone are the days of stores playing elevator music to create a sense of calmness. Now it's all about upbeat music to create a happy atmosphere, hoping you want to stay and also shop a little bit longer. Just like speed bumps on the road, stores have them too in order to get you to slow down and look at more items. So they place tables, clothing racks, and obstacles all throughout the store. 
How about those big signs that say buy one, get the next one half off? Well, they seem like they're a great deal, and they are if you're planning on already buying two. But if you only needed one, buying another half off is still getting you to spend more than you were planning on. And when you're ready to try on clothes, don't be tricked by the sale rack that's usually placed right by the dressing rooms in the back. It's one last chance for stores to get you to pick up more items. And here's one final last tip. You're gonna see a lot of discount signs with 10, 20, maybe even 50% off an item. But consumer experts say nothing is a deal unless it's 30% off or more. Good to know. Good to know. All right, do all my shopping this weekend. Oh, that makes sense, though. That's right, yeah. So 25% off? You just pick up the pace. Keep right, walking. Yeah, right on by it. All right, uh, the probability of rain is 100%. It is raining mm. now in much of central Indiana. Severe potential is not non-existent. It's not zero, but I think that it's marginal or low, and the threat would be damaging wind. It's going to be windy through the overnight. Any thunderstorms that can tap the stronger winds above ground level could produce isolated wind damage. 60 mile per hour gusts possible during the day tomorrow. Okay, there's the strong, deep area of low pressure. Snow right now in portions of Iowa, one to two inches per hour. That's the rate. They had about a foot in Denver. Minneapolis, St. Paul headed for six to nine inches of snow. If you're traveling tomorrow by car to Chicago, anywhere toward Ohio or uh, the rest of the Midwest, it will dry out. It's just the wind that will be your biggest opponent. Storm Shield is free. I just remind you when we get in this active pattern, if you want to have radar at your fingertips with your smartphone, you can. It's a free app and you'll need it again on Saturday as more rain comes back. We had some lightning that's disappeared for now. Greenfield to Mount Vernon, Fortville up to Anderson. This is zipping to the northeast. It's a quick blast of uh, rain, some of it moderate from Rockville to Greencastle, Nashville, and Seymour. The next wave of rain, and maybe that's the way this plays out. We'll see periods of rain tonight. You see a little break in there as well, but more forming to the south and west, and that will push northeast into central Indiana. Temperatures, upper 40s to low 50s. They won't change much tonight. Wind is out of the south. That will keep our temperatures from changing much. The wind will increase as we go through the overnight, gusting to 40 miles per hour as we get past midnight. 9 to 11, the expansion of the coverage and intensity of rainfall as we go overnight. The cold front may generate a thin line of thunderstorms tomorrow in that uh, 4 to 7 a.m. window and then push off to the east. As far as our rainfall potential, isolated spots could see an inch, generally half an inch or so. Tomorrow Tomorrow, strong winds first thing in the morning, gusting over 40, and through the day we may have that isolated wind gust that could hit 60 miles per hour. Temperatures fall all day tomorrow, then cooler but dry Thursday and most of Friday. As we mentioned in the Midwest and anywhere within driving distance should be pretty good weather tomorrow except for the wind. Here's your seven-day planner. The next weather system, aside from what's arriving tonight, comes in Friday night and impacts Saturday with rain. Could see another substantial rain rain an inch or more 40 percent chance of rain sunday then we're dry monday and Tuesday. just got to get through a few days of it yes kevin thank you well still ahead if you're an aspiring singer and colts fan this could be your big break how you can apply to lead the national anthem before a big game we've got that story headed your way when rtv6 news at seven continues weathertech.com get up all then the Indiana Fever introduced their new coach today, Marion Stanley. She's the seventh coach in the team's history. Stanley has been an assistant with the Washington Mystics for the last nine seasons and helped lead the team to the 2019 WNBA championship. She's also a member of the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Today, Stanley spoke about dedicating her life to basketball. I'm invested in this as a craft, and I want our players to be invested in each other and in the Indiana Fever. Uh, to be the best versions of themselves they can be each and every day. And I am sure that if they approach their work that way, we're going to be successful. Stanley replaces Pokey Chapman, who was let go this year. Chapman was also general manager. That role will be filled by former Fever star Tamika Catchings. She will expand her current duties as vice president of basketball operations to include GM. A huge opportunity for Colts fans who can sing and aren't afraid of doing it in front of a lot of people. The Colts are holding a Fantham contest to find someone to lead the national anthem before next month's fan appreciation game. The winner will also get four tickets to the game. It's on December 26th. 
22nd against the Panthers. You can apply through December 13th at Colts.com slash Phantom. To prove you have what it takes, you have to include a video with a sample of your singing. I still think you should apply, Mark. You think so? I sound amazing in the shower. Yeah, yeah. I'll stay. <laughs> you know there's a lot of talent out there. They won't have any problem finding anyone from Anderson to Knightstown. Uh, the rain pushing north and east. Our temperatures fall from the 50s tomorrow morning. Oh. Thanks for joining us here at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. You have a little more time to practice? 11. See you at 11. Oh, goodness.